I'll use this 3D printed model of a horizontal curve to help illustrate how the cross slope changes as we transition from the tangent through the curve and then back out uh, to the forward tangent. So on the tangent, we have normal crown where we have the cross slope falling away from the center line. So here's our center line of the roadway. So at 2%, we slope away towards the inside and the outside edge of pavement. And we talk about inside or outside, that's always relative to our curve. So this portion is the outside of the curve. This portion is the inside of the pavement relative to the curve. And again, on the other side, our other tangent, we have normal crown again. So our center line and then the pavement sloping away from that center line. In the middle of our curve, we're at full design super elevation. So at this point, our entire pavement is at the same cross slope from our outside edge of pavement at the highest point down to our center line and then finally at our inside edge of pavement. We can also examine this curve from a profile view. So this is basically from a side view of the roadway. And so a couple of things I want to point out from this perspective we can look at the inside edge of pavement, so we'll begin talking about the inside edge of pavement first. So we start at normal crown on our edge where we're transitioning from our tangent to our curve. So at this point you can see that the inside edge of pavement is lower than our center line. And we'll also see that that relationship, that 2% cross slope away from the center line or lower than the center line of the roadway does not change until we reach reverse crown. At reverse crown, our entire roadway is sloped at 2%. So we have that consistent cross slope along the entire cross slope of the pavement. At that point, the inside edge of pavement begins to rotate downward at the same rate as the outside edge of pavement rotates upward. So we'll see that rotation occur. So at this point, our design super elevation has been reached and our inside edge of pavement relative to the center line of the roadway remains consistent. After we transition out of our full design super elevation we begin rotating upwards so our inside edge of pavement rotates upwards until we reach the reverse crown on the other side of the curve and at that point our inside edge of pavement will not change throughout the transition back to normal crown. Another thing I'll point out in this example 3D printed curve, our center line elevation does not change. So there's no vertical curvature or grade in this example. So we see the center line does not change elevation throughout this curve. We can also take a look at the outside edge of pavement. Now at our tangents, from this perspective, we won't be able to see the outside edge of pavement, but it's the same amount lower as the inside edge of pavement. After we transition from our normal crown, we start that rotation of the outside edge of pavement upwards. And so that is a linear relationship. We just keep transitioning until we reach reverse crown. At that point, now both inside and outside edge of pavement uh, rotate together. We continue with that same rotation or the same sl slope change until we reach our full design super elevation. At that point, no further rotation will occur with our outside edge of pavement. After we're through with our design super elevation, we begin rotating downward until, again, we transition back to our normal crown. So that's from the profile perspective. Again, you can see the inside edge of pavement, the center line, and the outside edge of pavement. We can also view the horizontal curve from the plan view, so this is looking from above. So at this level, we can see the back tangent coming into the curve, and then the forward tangent transitioning out of the curve, and then the curve part provides that smooth transition between the tangents. So again, as we're coming into the curve, we're gonna be at normal crown. So we'll see our center line, and then at each edge of our center line, we're transitioning away at a 2% slope so towards the outside edge of pavement and the inside edge of pavement. And this cross section continues indefinitely until we reach our next horizontal curve. At that point, 
So we have our normal crown. We begin transitioning the outside edge of pavement upwards. The inside edge of pavement does not change at this point until we reach our adverse crown remove. So at this point, our inside edge of pavement is still at 2% sloping down from the center line. The outside edge of pavement is flat relative to our center line. After we leave adverse crown removed, we continue the transition with the outside edge of pavement continuing to rotate upwards until we reach reverse crown. So at this point, our entire cross section is at a 2% slope starting at our inside edge of pavement all the way through our outside edge of pavement. And at this point, this is where we begin the rotation upward of our, we continue the rotation upward of our outside edge of pavement and start the rotation of our inside edge of pavement. So starting at reverse crown, both of these are now are going to begin rotating at the same slope until we reach our full design super elevation. So at this point, we can see our inside edge of pavement is now lower than it was previously, and our outside edge of pavement has continued that upward rotation relative to the center line. So now we've reached our full design super elevation. So we'll continue with our full design super elevation. Our inside and outside edge of pavement will not rotate any more relative to the center line until we reach the point where we're going to begin rotating out of our curve. So again, we start that transition now back from full design super elevation until we reach reverse crown. So at this point, our inside edge, ele inside edge of pavement elevation is not going to change relative to the center line. So we'll have no more rotation on our inside edge of pavement. But our outside edge of pavement, we can see is going to need to continue the rotation downward until we can reach our normal crown. So again, we're taking that reverse crown. We're going to continue rotating the outside edge of pavement downward. The inside edge of pavement is not going to rotate. We continue through adverse crown removed. So at this point, our inside edge of pavement is still at 2% sloping away from the center line and our inside edge of pavement, our outside edge of pavement is at a 0% slope uh, relative to the center line. So we continue the rotation from our adverse crown removed cross section until we reach normal crown. So at this point, again, we're relative to the center line, we have a 2% slope each way away from the center line. And we'll continue that normal crown indefinitely on this direction of the curve until we reach our next curve on our alignment. Now I'll label some of the important points and distances along a horizontal curve when viewed from the plan view. One of the important distances is the tangent run out and that is the distance where the transition from normal crown to adverse crown removes occurs. So again, this distance is the run out. Another important distance is the super elevation run off. And that occurs from our adverse crown removed to our full design super elevation. So we have the run out from normal crown to adverse crown removed, and then the runoff from adverse crown removed to our full design super elevation. So those are the distances that help us make the transition from normal crown to our design super elevation. We have the same distances on our other side of the curve. So again, between normal crown and adverse crown removed, we have the run out, and from adverse crown removed, to our full design super elevation, we've got the run off. And again, in between, we have our full design super elevation. When we're laying out the transition of the cross slope relative to the, to the key points on a horizontal curve, we, it's important to know where our point of curvature, the PC, and our point of tangency, the PT, lie on this alignment. 
And so it's, it's typical if we're designing a simple curve to place the point of curvature within the super elevation runoff. And that can vary anywhere between 60 and 80% is typical along the length of the runoff. Uh, so for example, it, it's a, usually approximately two thirds. So our PC occurs at approximately two thirds the distance along the runoff. The same thing happens for our PT. So we'll have our PT point located about two thirds of the way along the runoff. So that means a third of the transition occurs uh, within the curve and then two thirds outside of our PT and the same thing with our PC. About two thirds of the rotation occurs before we reach the PC and another third occurs uh, inside the PC. If we have a spiral curve, which is made up of three distinct components, a tangent section, two spirals, and then the simple circular curve, the points before we reach adverse count removed are referred to as the tangent T and the points after adverse crown removed are our tangent T as well. Our spiral occurs between our adverse crown removed and our full design super elevation which is the super elevation runoff. So between those two points we have our spiraled transition S and that's the same on both sides of our curve from full design super elevation to our adverse crown remove is our spiraled curve S. And then in the center where we have our full design super elevation is our circular curve C. So as we move along we move from tangent to a spiraled segment to our circular curve C to another spiral transitioning us back to our tangent T. So as we label the four critical points in a spiral curve, the point where we go from tangent to spiral is known as the TS point, and that's the point at adverse crown removed. At our full design super elevation, we make the transition from spiral curve to circular curve. So that's our SC point, spiral to curve. We continue through our full design super elevation until we reach the beginning of our spiral transition. So at that point, we're gonna transition from curve to spiral, CS. We'll go through the spiral transition until we reach the beginning of our tangent at adverse crown removed. And that'll be our S T point, spiral to tangent. So for a spiral curve, we have our key points tangent to spiral, spiral to curve, curve to spiral, spiral to tangent. For a simple curve, we're going to place our PC and our PT along our super elevation runoff in our horizontal curve.